All right, this week on pay dirt, we're going coon hunting. I'm going with my buddy Michael Phillips here, who is a professional coon hunter. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go through uh, all the steps here and uh, try to teach everybody what all you know about this sport. Yes, sir. Well, I look forward to it. Let's, uh, let's get ready to put these dogs in the woods. All right, buddy. Let's go. Some of the benefits of coon hunting with these dogs is you can get rid of the coons, which are considered a rodent. You know, they, they eat the turkey eggs. Around these farms, if people have chickens or whatever, they'll get into chicken houses and eat the chicken eggs. A lot of people that have quail plantations or like to uh, turkey hunt or whatever, they want, you know, the animal gone or at least controlled to where they're not, you know, doing damage to their oh, eggs yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Let's go through a checklist here for people who are not familiar with coon hunting. Now, obviously, probably the most important thing is a dog. Yeah, the dog. You definitely got to have a dog. Now, what kind of dogs you got? So the dogs that we're going to be hunting tonight are tree and walkers. To be honest with you, the reason I got out of coon hunting was because we run around chasing dogs all night. So nowadays they got these GPS tracking collars that uh, you got a handheld unit that actually will keep up with the dog as long as uh, we keep the dogs within 10 miles of where we turn them okay. loose tonight. We can track them with this unit. Okay. So the technology is just unreal real nowadays. What else you got to have? I mean obviously you got to wear the right stuff. Boots that are waterproof, uh, snake proof chaps. Yeah, you got to have these chaps right here. That keeps them uh, Keep some snakes and them briars from getting you right there. Uh, you need a four wheel drive truck. You know, you need a dog box. You need a collar on the dog with at least your name, your address, your phone number in case you lose your dog. Uh, you need a leash. So once you get to the tree, you're able to retrieve your dog and get him, you know, take him back to the, wherever you parked your truck at. You gotta have a light, you know, where you can see to get through the woods cause of course it's dark when you're coon hunting. So the light I got here is a four volt LED light. It's got a uh, amber, green, it's got a red, and it's also got a laser pointer. So if you like to see the coon up in the tree and nobody else don't see it, you can put that laser pointer on that uh, coon to kind of demonstrate exactly where the, where the coon's at if somebody you know, can't see it. Of course a gun, in case you see a coon. 22 long rifle is what we use. We usually use this little single shot too because it's safe when you come in the woods. You don't have to worry about leaving you know, a shell in it when you're walking. Some people use, you know, shotguns, four, you know, 410s or 20 gauges. Uh, you usually can knock them down and get them out there with a 22 long rifle. You need a coon squaller. You got to have a coon squaller because if you get there, a lot of times the coon may be looking at the moon. Right. Roger, and they ain't gonna be looking at them dogs because them dogs are making all that noise down there. So you gotta have some kind of squalor. You use them collars to make them look. But the most important piece of equipment, I would say, is the boots with the snake chaps and stuff like that, just because our weather conditions down here are so right. crazy. But not only that, I mean, even when it's cold, you go out there and you get in a, a swamp at night, you know, you're gonna, you don't want your feet to get wet. Is there anything uh, game law-wise, I mean, like, here in Georgia, all you gotta do is have a small game hunting license? Just a license. small game hunting license, and if you go on your WMAs, of course you need your WMA stamp, and a lot of people do hunt on public land, you know, because mm -hmm. there's, yeah. coon hunters has always got a bad name for, for, you know, during deer season, people don't want your dogs on their land. During turkey season, they don't want your dogs on their land. Uh, so people will go to public land because during the prime of hunting season, people are deer hunting, yeah. or during turkey season, they're turkey hunting. So, uh, you know, that, that becomes a problem as well. I know we had talked earlier about how long or how much land do you got to have to coon hunt. I mean, these dogs don't know the boundaries, Roger. If you turn them loose tonight and we're on real tree farms, which has a lot of property here in Georgia, 
that does not mean if that coon goes off the property line, they're not gonna follow it. You know, one of the things we try to do is respect other people's land. Uh, we have the handheld units. At least you can see who the landowner is that they're on where you can kind of at least try to reach out to them through via if you're friends with them on Facebook, Messenger, or have a cell phone number for them or something to, you know, to call and ask, can you go retrieve your dog? You know, when you're out there on somebody else's land, you have to treat it like it's your own. You don't tear up the roads, you don't rut up the roads, you don't take down people's gates, you don't cut locks off people's gates. You go in there and do what the landowner asked you to do and respect their land just like it's your own. And, and, and that's the way you get invited back to that's go to right. places like yeah. this and, and, and go hunting. Outside of that, that's pretty much, I think, all you need. I think if you got the dog, the gun, the leashes, the tracking devices, and the collars, and the boots, and of course a real tree cat, and then That's you're right. ready to go. Let's get ready to put these dogs in the woods. All right, buddy. Let's go. All right, y'all guys, get ready and cut them. Cut them loose. So now what we do is we stand here and wait. Hopefully they go out there and they smell a coon down there on that creek. And when they do, they'll start barking when they smell its scent. And then uh, they'll trail that coon to wherever it's fed, you know, this afternoon or whatever. And hopefully it'll go up the tree and uh, they'll tree it where we can actually get in there and see the coon. We just got a strike just then. I saw a dog named Trip there, he just struck. If you own the dog and you hunt him a lot, you, you hear him night after night, you can kind of tell exactly what he sounds like. And so when they strike, uh, it's a different type of bark. They'll only bark every few minutes, you know. Uh, when they tree, uh, most of them are tree and they'll bark, you know, you'll get like a hundred barks a minute, you'll hear them. I mean, they'll do a locate and they'll just bark, 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 bark when they get stationary in the tree. There's their track and there's all the dogs grouped together there. You tell, you know, one of them's a little deeper voice and they're going on down that creek. How far are they away from us now, Blake? 321 yards. 321 yards. Sound like they're on a pretty good track now. Maybe we'll get a tree here pretty quick. One of these dogs out here is kind of independent. He don't like to uh, hunt with the other dogs. He goes hunting with them, don't cause any problems, but he likes to find his own tree and his own coon which when you're in the field trials kind of helps you because if two or three of the dogs trick coon together, they have to share the points that they are awarded. So if you got a dog that, you know, goes and finds his own coon away from them, he'll, he'll score more points than, than the dogs just, you know, packing together and working with each other. You know, these units are used for squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting, coon hunting, field trialing with bird dogs, whatever. And so this one's set up to tell you if a dog's treed. So it'll, it'll tell you when they get stationary and treated. That way if they're out of here, and, you know, you know what's going on with them. You don't have to worry about them traveling on. Right here you got this. We're in there. And it'll pop up a notification saying whatever dog it is treated. You see right here, it's a dog standing up on the tree. Ain't that something? <laughs> 612 yards. We got a squaller, got your unit, and a pocket full of 22 bullets. Well, let's ease in there and see what we got. That's very important. If you don't mark that truck, we'll be walking around in here all night long trying to get back. I think the coon's sitting right there, I think. See him moving now, Philip? I was trying to get to him to look at you, but we may walk around on the other side. He may be looking over there. I guess we gonna get the gun out and uh, reward him for uh, Tree and a coon, especially since he left them other two dogs that come in here and got a coon by itself. All right, let's see if we can.
That's the only bad thing about this gun, you have to load it one at a time, but you don't have to worry about leaving it loaded. All right, we got him on the ground there, Philip. Well, we got us a real live raccoon there, Rog. All right, buddy, I appreciate <laughs> it, buddy. He ain't live no more, I don't think. Well, no, that's right. Old dog slipped in here by himself and got one. That's great. But he was he all probably got the coon treat in yeah. 15 minutes, didn't he? I guarantee you. That's old rock. So we'll see if he'll tote the coon out where well, we ain't got to tote the coon out. Sometimes they will. Yep, looks like he's going to do it. I hear you. All right, well, let's head back to the truck. Yeah, Roger, this is perfect coon habitat right here. All this uh, low-lying water and swamps, being oh, we've been yeah. getting all the rain and all. Yeah, yeah. This, this is perfect habitat for them. You know, and we've seen uh, up on the hill, we've seen all those turkey markings and all where they've been feeding and all. So, you know, they probably, according to what time of the year they start laying and nesting, you get these coons out of here, you ain't got to worry about, you know, eating all them eggs. That was a great ending to this week's uh, pay dirt episode. I mean, we came in here, done what we wanted to do, and got the old egg-eating coon out. And uh, I don't know, we're gonna go back in here and see if we can get on another one here.